Good afternoon, boys and girls. Welcome to this afternoon's presentation of our last Native American tribe, the Desert Indians of California. These Indians traveled the furthest south all the way to San Diego, but also uh, a little more inland towards the Mojave and the desert regions. So let's take a look at this particular set of tribes. Here are your notes. You can go ahead and pause the video and write them all down and then continue on when you are ready. So today we're going to be talking about the desert Indians and these Indians uh, were fewer in number um, partly because of, well mainly because there was a lack of food and water and with less food and water, less resources, um, your population is going to be smaller. The desert Indians of the south um, were prim primarily the Kahulia, Puate, Mojave, and the Chumiyaha. Chumiyahi? Those are the ones from San Diego, I know that. Um, <clears throat> and they had a very uh, hard way of life because, like I said before, the lack of food and water. And it was just uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, lifestyle was... Uh, boring at times, but also um, there was just it, it was very hard to to collect enough for your family, and there were there was a constant um, struggle to put dinner on the table. Unlike the tribes of the north, where they can just have all those acorns laying around on the ground to pick up. Um, they were also hunter and gatherers. Uh, but they did have to travel around to find new pastures for food and fresh plants. Um, speaking of plants, they, uh, they also ate a lot of roots too, and they, they, they had lots of different kinds of roots that they ate. Um, so it was tough. And also the traveling was tough too, because, uh, they did travel, but it was hard because it was so hot and they would have to do it during certain seasons or even at night again because of the weather and the harsh conditions. If you've ever been to the desert then you know what I'm talking about. As I was saying, um, the desert Indians knew of over 200 edible roots and they would cook uh, some of the stalks, the yucca plant here up to uh, three days. Uh, they did manage to grow uh, some crops with the California or Colorado River, um, beans, squash, pumpkins, corn, stuff like that, and <clears throat> it was a good thing that they had those. They also used springs and wells, depending on uh, which tribe you're talking about. And for those of you who don't know what a spring is, spring is just basically a an area where there's water under 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 the dirt where they can find it or uh, small rivers. The Mojave that lived along the Colorado River River, <laughs> liver river uh, would plant its food along the riverbanks. Uh, they would also um, hunt for fish as well in the river, but uh, there wasn't as much, uh, not as uh, abundant like in the north where they had you know the salmon runs and they had those weirs. They didn't really have that uh, along the Colorado. Um, because I grew up in San Diego, I actually am pretty familiar with some of this, the ecosystems here. Um, but the, the animals and plants that they came in contact with would go long, can go long periods of time uh, without water. That means uh, you know reptiles, um, specially designed plants like cactus and uh, things like that, Joshua tree, etc because it, it just didn't rain as much, or hardly ever. Um, so some of the animals they uh, came into contact with were rattlesnakes, raccoons, hares, coyotes, desert fox, gila monsters, rosy boa, and bobcats. And I have personally seen um, pretty much all of these in the wild, except maybe the gila monster. 
But this guy right here, I put him over here in the right-hand corner, this kind of silver and uh, brownish snake. This is called the rosy boa, and as a kid, I used to always try to catch these. Um, if you ever see a rosy boa in, in the wild, you can just go up and pick it up. They're the only, uh, or one of the only snakes in the wild that are actually tame, so it's not going to try to bite you or fight you or anything like that. It'll just wrap around your arm and you can pet it and it's really cool. It's almost like a cat snake. But the problem with that is when, because rosy boas don't have a fear of humans, uh, a lot of them get captured or died and they're actually becoming more endangered because they don't fear humans and humans will take advantage of that. And they, or they would used to even eat them back then. Um, some interesting plants in the desert, like I said, were cactus, uh, Joshua trees. There's actually a, a national park called Joshua Tree National Park. If you ever have a chance to go there, you really should. It's, it's a really great place to camp. And as well as yucca plants. And yucca plants can be used for uh, lots of different things. And for those who didn't know, the one on the bottom right, that's a cactus, spiky one. And it's blooming at the top. And there's lots of different types of cactus. At my house, we had three different kinds of cactus that, that grew. And uh, I remember as a kid, we used to... Uh, play with the cactus all the time, although you have to be careful, it's, it's pretty spiky. The desert peoples of the California region were also had a, had a different governing system, and they were different from uh, these other tribes in the north that had more communication with other tribes because of the travel and stuff like that, so they had their own unique ways of life. Uh, the desert Indians were led by chiefs who had nearly total control. They decided where to hunt, where to go next, and solve problems amongst the tribe. So it was almost like a king. Uh, chiefs, like the kings, were passed from, along from father to son. However, in some nations, the women could be chiefs. An example is with the uh, Kahila. I cannot pronounce that. They also uh, they could have women who were chiefs. But most desert Indians formed clans. However, the Mojave saw themselves as one nation, but they would still fight against each other. And that had to do for multiple reasons, um, hunting grounds, um, you know, unfair trades, or some sort of disrespects, similar to what all humans fight about. But it was interesting that women could be the chiefs and that these chiefs had supreme power. And that's it. That is our quick presentation. Uh, hope you enjoyed it.